For some people, when they think of what animals dominated land habitats before the dinosaurs, they might think of giant insects, or maybe large squatting amphibians. But stretching about 80 million years before the dinosaurs took over the world, the dominating creatures were actually ancestors of mammals and their relatives. About 340 million years ago, during a period known as the Carboniferous, land vertebrates were represented by small lizard-looking animals. They had moved away from their fish-like ancestors in evolving the appropriate adaptations to take up permanent residence on the land. Mainly in adapting amniotic eggs, they could be laid on the land, meaning they were no longer tied to the water. Very early on, these basal land creatures diverged into three distinct groups. There were synapsids, anapsids, and diapsids, all categorized by the amount of holes in their skull. Anapsids had none, synapsids had one, and diapsids had two. Diapsids would go on to become reptiles shortly after the split, and then eventually birds and dinosaurs. The consensus is that anapsids have no currently living representatives, although some scientists have argued that turtles are in fact anapsids, but this is a controversial theory. Finally, synapses contain all living mammals and all their extinct relatives, although they would be barely recognisable as mammals at this point in history. Right from the start of the Permian period, 300 million years ago, it was the synapses that were becoming the dominant land creatures, and reptiles would have to wait. One of the earliest large synapses was a very strange looking creature called Cotolyrhynchus that had an almost comically tiny head for its body size. And this was not the only weird looking early synapsis, as there was also a Stemosuchus that had large horns coming from its face, not too dissimilar to antlers. Although the most unquestionably famous early synapsid was Dimetrodon. The different species of Dimetrodon varied in size a lot, but the largest may have been almost 5 meters, meaning it was probably the largest predator around at this time. It possessed a sail running down its back, along with quite a few other synapsids from this time, like Secodontosaurus and Adaphosaurus. The early Permian most likely had a very similar climate to the current day, so it was thought that these sails may have been used for thermoregulation, as it would have been pretty cold in the winter in a lot of these habitats. Dimetrodon were far more closely related to you than they were to dinosaurs, but with their reptilian appearance and probable cold-bloodedness, you could be forgiven for not seeing it. However, Dimetrodon were early synapsids, and later they would start to become much more mammalian. The more mammalian descendants are referred to as therapsids, and these animals started to outcompete the early synapsids like Dimetrodon in the mid Permian. A less talked about but defining feature of mammals, unique among the animal kingdom, are their ear bones. Unlike all other animals, mammals have three bones that aid in the function of their ears. Reptiles only possess one bone in their ear, but their jaws are much more complicated with many bones. Early synapsids also had complex multiple bone jaws, and over the course of the evolution of synapsids, these bones started to ride further and further back until eventually forming the ear bones in early species of mammal. This change in jaw placement is so indicative of the evolution of these mammal ancestors that it is often used to gauge how closely related a synapsid is to a true mammal. Moving down the synapsid family tree closer to true mammals, you would find groups of animals like Gorgonopsia that were what you would refer to as stem mammals breaking away from the mammal lineage before they became mammals, but they still had many mammalian features. The jaw and ear bone were starting to look a lot more mammal-like, and their hind legs were directly beneath them, unlike with reptiles. The largest species was the size of a bear, and they were ferocious carnivores, tearing into flesh with their saber teeth. However, there was a lot more to their teeth than just this. They were some of the first animals to evolve what is called a heterodont, where their teeth have several different shapes for doing different jobs. But by far the most amazing thing about these animals is that they possess some fur covering. It is not thought that they were completely covered in fur, but they had found some fossilized feces with hair in it from the time period, thought to belong to a Gorgonopsid. The largest mass extinction in history hit the Earth at the end of the Permian 250 million years ago, and along with nearly all other life on Earth, the majority of synapsids were killed, including the Gorgonopsians. The end of the mass extinction marks the beginning of the Triassic period, and despite the devastation, shortly after, synapsids were still the dominant group of animals, with Lystosaurus having a short-lived but massive success right at the beginning of the Triassic. During the Triassic, the climate was much hotter and drier than the Permian, and this is when you start to see a previously obscure reptile known as archosaurs start to gain a foothold. Basal archosaurs are the ancestors of crocodiles and dinosaurs, and they seem to have been better suited for the new environment. Although archosaurs were becoming more and more common and diversifying, 
The group of synapsids that included Lystosaurus, called the Cynodonts, still dominated large herbivore niches even after the appearance of the dinosaurs. They coexisted with the dinosaurs for about 30 million years, and perhaps even co-evolved, as towards the end of their existence they grew to very large sizes. The largest and last decinodont was called Lysowicia, and was the size of an African elephant, and died out 200 million years ago. The ancestor of sauropods replaced them as the dominant herbivores, and synapsids would not be the dominant animals again until the extinction of the dinosaurs. Decinodonts weren't close relations of mammals, but actually branched off longer ago than Gorgonopsians. The representatives of the mammal ancestral lineage during the Triassic were the basal members of a group called Cynodontia, that contains all living mammals, their ancestors, and their closest relatives. Their close relatives would contain animals like Triarachidon, that was a burrowing animal. A multi-chambered burrow was found from the early Triassic containing 20 skeletons of this animal. This is the earliest evidence of cohabitation in burrows and shows a level of social sophistication previously thought to be unique to primitive mammals. Cynodons like these had marks in their upper and lower jaw, which is what you see with animals that have whiskers. And adding to all this, they were also partially warm-blooded, but not to the same extent as mammals. Artist depictions often show them with fur, and although this is perfectly valid conjecture, there is currently no evidence of this. Direct evidence for complete fur coverings and synapses did not turn up until 205 million years ago in mammalia forms, which at this point in history were small rodent-like animals that would eventually become true mammals during the Jurassic. Although the end of the Triassic marked the end of their dominance, one group of non-mammalian synapsids called Tritolontidae survived right up into the early Cretaceous as little as 110 million years ago. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to be notified of future uploads from me, then consider subscribing.